were his Minnesota driver's license and his permit to carry a pistol. The following day in his interview, Officer Yanez told BCA investigators that the, after receiving his proof of insurance, Castile told him he had a firearm at the same time as he reached down between his right leg, his right thigh area, and center console. Officer Yanez said that as Castile was reaching down to his right, Castile turned his shoulder, kept his left hand on the steering wheel, and then canted his upper body, blocking Officer Yanez's view of his right hand. At that point, Officer Yanez articulated that he was scared for his life and that of his partner. Officer Yanez's verbatim statement included in the criminal complaint is inconsistent with the statement he made immediately following the incident in which he stated he never saw or knew where the gun was. To those who may say that this incident was Philando Castile's fault, I would submit that no reasonable officer knowing, seeing, and hearing what Officer Yanez did at the time would have used deadly force under these circumstances. As you, the United States Supreme Court has instructed, I have given Officer Yanez every benefit of the doubt on his use of deadly force. But I cannot allow the death of a motorist who was lawfully carrying a firearm under these facts and circumstances to go unaccounted for. Philando Castile was not resisting or fleeing. There was absolutely no criminal intent exhibited by him throughout this encounter. He was respectful and compliant based upon the instructions and orders he was given. He volunteered in good faith that he had a firearm beyond what the law requires. He emphatically stated that he wasn't pulling it out. His movement was restricted by his own seat belt he was accompanied in his vehicle by a woman and a young child. Philando Castile did not exhibit any intent, nor did he have any reason to shoot Officer Yanez. In fact, his dying words were in protest that he wasn't reaching for his gun. There simply was no objective threat posed to Officer Yanez, Officer Couser, or to anyone in that car. The mere mention or presence of a firearm alone cannot justify the use of deadly force. According to a national expert on police procedures and use of force that we retained, the totality of the circumstances indicate that Officer Yanez's use of deadly force against Philando Castile during the July 6th stop was not necessary, was objectively unreasonable, and was inconsistent with generally accepted police practices. In addition, under the same circumstances, Officer Yanez's discharge of his firearm seven times into a vehicle in close proximity to and toward Diamond Reynolds and her four-year-old daughter endangered their safety. Given everything I have just covered and what is contained in the criminal complaint, it is important to remember that we still must prove these allegations in court. And Officer Yanez is presumed innocent until he is found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I ask the public for its continued trust and patience as the court process moves forward and we strive to achieve justice for Philando Castile, his family and friends, and our broader community. Thank you very much. Before we get to questions, I'll do a couple of quick reminders. Um, as the county attorney mentioned, this is now an ongoing case. We can only limit those questions to the case itself.